Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Thank you for watching. It means the world to me that you give up your time and come and listen. Um, so I want to talk to you on this one about how to build a brand in 2020. You know, I think brand is is a, a misunderstood area of business. Um, and, uh, and so I kind of want to talk into that. I've just come off the back of two days with two different groups where uh, basically what we call our 4% club, which is our bigger businesses. We put them all in a small group around a boardroom table uh, for, for a day. Um, and this is a conversation I've been having with them. And although brand, you know, it's, it's not a conversation reserved for bigger businesses. It's it, the earlier you can start with brand in mind, then, then the, you know, the, the better your business is going to be. So it doesn't matter whether your business is one day old, it doesn't matter whether your business is family business has been around a hundred years. You know, there, there are a hundred year old businesses that never built a brand and there are, you know, one week old businesses that are starting to build a brand and that's obviously going to win in the long run. So, so we're going to talk about brand. <clears throat> How do you build one? Like what are the tools available? And, um, and, and hopefully I can give you enough kind of big picture to get you excited and small picture to get you started. Um, and that'd be the goal. But I want to draw a distinction first uh, between brand, all right, brand and versus sales. Two very different things, okay? You know, brand is obviously essentially that. It's recognizable, right? It, is, it, it attracts the right kind of people. It requires a lot less effort on you in the long term to be able to do brand in terms of scaling a business. Sales is basically transactional, right? So sales is when you've got to do outbound, ringing people, converting them over the phone, getting credit card details, okay? Uh, and so, you know, they're, they're two very different ways to grow a business. Um, they're essentially, like, you're probably always going to have to do sales. You should always do sales. But if you're kept in a sales environment, which if you've got no brand, you're forced to just do sales forever, and it's hard to scale up and it's very, very, uh, you know, it, like it requires a huge amount of effort to keep that up over a long period of time. Um, and quite often you feel like a hamster on the wheel, right? So let me draw, um, let me draw another distinction for you uh, in a different way of thinking about it, right? I would call it brand is farming <laughs> versus sales being hunting. So you always should be hunting, like you've got to hunt, you've got to go out there, you've got to kill, you've got to eat, right? That's the, that's the lifeblood of your business. But if you never farm, you're not shoring up any future food, right? This is how you get instant food, brilliant, you need to do that, right? Like if you're watching this and you've built no brand, you're going to have to do sales and you're going to have to do hunting now because you've got to make this month's revenue, right? So, so you have to do that. But I guess, you know, farming is what ensures that you've got food for the next season, whatever, six months time, 12 months time, whatever it is, all right? So we we'll always want to be pushing you to farming in this particular case. Um, and then, okay, just to kind of draw a distinction, right? Because it's the same thing. Brand farming is your long-term revenue and hunting is your short-term revenue. The reason why that is important for you to understand is because because if you do brand well and you're farming, right, which means you're top of mind, which means you've got recognizable, understanding, you've got social capital. If you understand that, then, then basically people find you forever. So your long-term revenue is, the, is almost inbound. People want to do business with you. They want to be associated with you. They will seek you out because of brand. In the absence of brand, you are forced to do nothing but outbound. Right, you know, very, very marketing and sales. Marketing, sales, conversion. Marketing, sales, conversion. And by the way, it's brilliant. And if that's where you are today, it's brilliant. However, you want to start putting your attention towards brand because that's what's going to mean that you have your future revenue shored up. By the way, if you're enjoying this, do me a favor. Hit the subscribe button below and you'll get the alerts of all the other shows that we put out in coming weeks, months, and years. Okay. So, you know, when I think about brand, like I just listed down some names here of people that have done brand well, and there's, there's a million of them. 
Um, so like I, I thought about Woolworths, right? Woolworths. So here in Australia, Woolworths is uh, like a grocery chain. In other parts of the world, it's a different type of businesses, but we have a grocery chain. It's like thinking about like, when was the last time Woolworths called somebody and said, would you like to come in and buy some carrots this week? Right? They just don't need to. We know what they stand for. We know who they are and so forth. Right? You know, like I think about Apple computers. When was the last time Apple computers called you and said, hey, listen, you know, you need, you should get an iPad. They don't, they don't because they don't need to. Rolls Royce, Rolls Royce are not on the phone trying to convert people, giving them 6% discounts if they buy in August. They don't need to, right? Even Diesel Jeans, Ralph Lauren, those kind of companies. Ralph don't ring anybody and say, would you like to buy any? Why? It's a brand. We as consumers self-select brand and then we associate with those brands and because they build social capital into us, then we want to go and shop with them, okay? So I guess, you know, so what is a brand? Some of you might say brand is logo. I would say to you that if, you know, if brand's quite a complex or broad area, which we're gonna drill into, logo uh, would make up, I reckon, no more than 3% of the, in the total equity of a brand, the logo would only be 3%. Like it's, it's, it's not the deciding factor. Uh, and we know that because, you know, look at modern times, Skype, Google, Facebook, they, they, they're, not, they're just words. You know, like Google's entire brand is a word in different colors. Like it's not innovative, it's not catchy. Like it's, it, it's Google offer us so much in life that they could have called themselves whatever they could have called themselves whatever in different colors and they would be and if they had executed the strategy that Google have they'd be the same size they are today okay which tells you that the logo the marks the IP are not the variation or the variable when it comes to their success okay so it might be a tiny bit it might be a tiny bit but it but it's really not it so what is brand brand is um, well, I guess the big rocks of what makes up a brand is things like feelings. What feelings do people get when they associate with you or think about your, your, you know, your company, your industry? Um, what are their, what that people associate with your values? Uh, they get to know what you stand for and don't stand for. You know, <clears throat> they get to kind of have a perceived expectation of you. Right, those things, values, what you stand for, expectations, those things make up your brand 50 times more than your logo or how catchy your trademark is or, or things like that, okay? <clears throat> and so, you know, and, uh, and I was talking to some guys in this room the other day, like I said, and I used an example. There was a guy in the room that had a, had a Ralph Lauren business shirt on with, the, with the, the polo player stitched onto it. And I said to this guy, I said, you know, what was your reason for buying the shirt? I said, was it because of how amazingly detailed the helmet is stitched on that logo on that shirt? He's like, didn't even know he had a helmet. I'm like, exactly, right? You know, like, it's just because the, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a symbol of status. It's a, it's a certain level, you know? When you're spending 160 bucks on a, on a shirt, you didn't, like, everyone knows you didn't spend 24 bucks on a shirt, you spent 160, and so... That comes with an element, an element of brand in, in, involved in all of that. It, you know, they're also a phenomenally made piece of uh, clothing and those sort of things, okay? So you, they last and da-da-da, those things. So that, they're all the things. It's not about the horse. It's not about the polo player and how well his little, you know, the, the horse's shoes are stitched or the thread count. It's not into that stuff. It's everything else around it that really, really matters, okay? So I guess that's part one for you. When you sit down and you think about your business, what is what are the other things? Forgetting your logo for a second, just park that. What are the values you want to be known for? What's the perceived expectation you want people to realize? You know, when, when, when somebody is describing to somebody else your business, what words would you like them to use, all right? What, if, I was to, if I was to survey your clients, what values, A, do, would they tell me you have, but B, would you like them to have? Because that's the stuff we have to convey in brand. Okay, and and by the way, there is a there's a land grab right now for brand in every industry in every geographical region. Okay, J just because there is an incumbent, just because there's a brand that has been top of mind for hundreds of years, it doesn't mean they will be anymore because internet is 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 undoing a lot of those things. You know, like I, I think about it when I was a kid, Volvo was known as the safest car in the world. 
And I don't know if they are anymore, but I know that they look hideous. Um, and so, you know, that's probably not working for them. So, you know, and, um, you know, and, and I know that Rolls Royce is the ultimate vehicle for wealth and prestige to a certain level, right? That's that, that it would be that and nothing else. You know, Tesla have done an amazing job just staying on cars. They've got, a, they've got an amazing brand really set apart for, you know, people that, are, that, that love technology, you know, um, maybe the more progressive type people, uh, those that have a bent towards saving the whales and saving the planet would go that way. So they've got their brand loyalty from a group of people that absolutely love what they have and what they don't have, all right? So that's important for you to understand. Here's the good news. It has never been easier and never been cheaper to build brand than it is right now. It's never been easier and it's never been cheaper to build brand than it is right now, all right? And I kind of want to, you know, just we'll kind of drill down on that a little bit and I kind of want to show you how it's done, why it's done, and then just give you enough small detail so that you can get started. All right, this is how you build brand. This is how you start building brand so that you've got a, you know, a brand that pops in 2020. This is how you do it. Right, ready? Educational content with no agenda. Now just think about how simple that is. If you were to start to put yourself in the shoes of your prospects, clients, customers, and ask yourself the question, what would be valuable to them? And then you set about producing that content without the sleazy sales pitches at the end. Okay, you can do some soft hooks, but you're never, do, never doing the hard hooks. If you were to think about, I'm going to start to put out tons and tons of content that is educational, uh, valuable, that helps people, my ideal clients, I'm going to put out content that helps them without an agenda, without a sleazy hook at the end, without buy my products, then by default, all you're doing is putting your brand, your company, your ethos, your values, what you stand for, what you do and don't, you're putting all of that out into the marketplace so that people can get an experience of you before they buy from you. And then basically you change the entire perception and you do a land grab in the mind of the masses in your area. It doesn't have to be national, it doesn't even have to be state, it could just be your area. But you can start to do a land grab so that by repetition, by looking like you care, right, um, by putting out content that matters, then people over time will start to associate your industry with you. Uh, and so, you know, the upshot of all of that is somebody will have seen your content and whether they buy from you or not, they'll go to a barbecue with their friend Bruce and Bruce will say, hey, I need somebody who can help me in this industry. And if it's your industry, they'll be like, hey, you should go speak to these people or I'll forward you a video of these people or whatever, whatever. That's the upshot of brand, okay? You're, just, you're basically taking the reasons why somebody would buy from you, putting them into content and then flooding the market with all of those assets so that your market could get handle on who you are and what you stand for, and then, and then do that for long enough, and it all accumulates into being top of mind awareness. And once you've got top of mind awareness in your geographical area, in your industry, then it's absolutely game over because the trickle down effect of the awareness will be some no you know every like the people that know of you some will some will watch your videos some will go to your website some will buy your products some will attend your events some will some will buy your lowest products some will buy the next one like the 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 fallout of having 20 times as many people know you is that all things being equal you'll sell 20 times as much stuff okay that's what brand is, all right? Brand is that. Okay, what are the traps? The traps are, is that most people, when I say put out content, will be like, oh yeah, I put out a video the other month, and believe it or not, people, people talked about it. They watched it and they talked about it. And I'm like, yes, imagine if you put out 20 videos that month and you've been doing it for three years. Like, like you can't put out one video, right? This, this, is, this is a lifestyle. So, the mistake most people make is they do this for one month, two months, six videos, and they come back to me and go, no one's watching it. 
No one's watching it. No one's watching my videos. I'm like, well, they are. It's just you've got a figure in your mind of what that needs to look like, and it's not that. But who's to say it's not building momentum? Case in point, uh, one of my clients says to me the other day, oh, you know, no one is watching my video on LinkedIn, right? So I go over to LinkedIn, have a bit of a look. Oh, you got 1,600 views. They're like, yeah, but that's nothing. I'm like, hang on a minute. 1,600 people went out of their way to put their eyeballs on your brand, your thumbnail, your content. Like, like, like just to put it into perspective, you could run ads in Australia, this is. I don't know about the rest of the world. But in Australia, if you were to run a TV show, Anything outside of prime time, right? So instead of like the big, big, big shows, they would be getting 200,000 people watch those. You come, out of, you come out of like prime time and you go to the rest of the day, they would be pumped if two, three, five thousand people watch it. And they're spending half a million bucks an episode to produce it, right? So when I hear somebody's literally just started and they're getting 1,600 views, I'm like... That's amazing compared to 50 years ago when that would have cost you $50,000, right, to be on TV to get that many eyeballs, all right? Now you can get it for next to nothing. That's why I'm saying it's never been easier and never been cheaper to build a brand than it is right now. So you cannot, you, you, if you do this strategy and decide to put out content continually that's educational and valuable, you cannot look back to measure an ROI on brand within 24 months. It is a two-year strategy because you'll trip yourself up. You look back after eight months and it could all be momentum underground that's building. It's just about to bust through, but you go, oh, nothing's coming, right? People do it after two months. They're like, I haven't got any sales yet. Yeah, we're not doing sales. We're doing brand, okay? Do your sales because you've got to make, you've got to make revenue this month. But brand is shoring up your future revenue, but people quit far too quickly. Far, far, far too quickly. I'll, I'll, I'll introduce you to something really, really funny. Um, I'll show you a video that, uh, so I'm five years into my YouTube uh, content in this kind of setting. All right, the, 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 uh, the anniversary just came up in my, in my Facebook as a reminder. Um, and it was five years, and a, five years and a week ago that I started the first iteration of this, which was Business Greenhouse TV. Um, and then I didn't want to go under that branding, so we changed it to Kingdom Business TV, hence why you're here. And that was five years ago, all right? So take a look at this video. This was episode one of the first iteration five years if ago. If you're like really dove, like you're that kind of like really compassionate, caring, kind, like, like you're a doormat at every opportunity, you're going to make them crazy, right? <laughs> crazy. Uh, and, uh, you know, things have come a long way since then. You know, that was a, that was a contracted team that would meet me on site and, and film some videos and we would batch them and things like that. And now it's all an in-house team, right, that do it all. And uh, we have our own studio and, and life's a whole bunch much better. But, but it's interesting for me. Um, let me take you back to another example. Uh, this video, this video I'm putting in more for the entertainment value because you'll see, you'll see a much younger Wes. This one is 12 years old. Welcome to this week's video, uh, where today I want to talk to you a bit about having fun. You know, each week I come on here and I tell you something new and I ask you to do a task. So that's crazy, right? 12 years ago, I used to wear checkered shirts and checkered stripy ties at the same time. And yes, yes, I had hair back 12 years ago. I, I show you that because I want you to know a couple of things. Th those, those first videos, the second one I just showed you, I think they're sitting like 12 years ago, they're sitting with like 40 to 50 views. And I literally know my mum's half of them, right? So, so everyone's like, oh, that's rubbish. That didn't work. Like by, by all standards, that didn't work. I'll tell you what that did for me 12 years ago. It got me started. It got me started with, and I had a, a Logitech webcam that was a big circle. You might remember it. It had this little gripper that you put over the, your laptop and you plugged a USB in uh, and you could film videos like that. That's what that was, all right? Terrible in the, in the scheme of things. Like, but it got me started and everyone says to me, oh, those videos didn't make any money. Yes, they did. They made me millions because they got me comfortable in front of a camera. They got me, you know, producing like top of mind thinking while talking to an inanimate object. That they, they, they started that journey, brand. You know, the one that was a little bit sooner, the one that was five years ago, you know, that was, that was obviously much better produced and so forth. I'll give you some stats. 
Over the last five years on Facebook alone, I, my content has been in front of 1.2 million people with more than 6 million interactions on my content. Just, just, think about, just think about the world that we live in now, right? You know, if I had been born and I was trying to do this 30 years ago, I had mainstream television and the wireless and a newspaper and, and, and big budgets. Never would have had a run at this. Here we are today, right, with, 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 some, with some basic equipment uh, and a tenacity to keep going. Six million interactions. That's why I'm saying to you it's never been easier, never been cheaper. But remember, like I am, I am finally starting to see an upkick in brand. If I go to an event now, people recognize me. If I go to speak at a conference, there are people that will go to that conference because they saw that I'm on the ticket, right? That's probably only started to happen in the, I mean, all, always a little bit, but there's an upkick right now in the last 12 months, okay? It's brand. It's brand. I didn't ask anybody to go. I didn't call anybody. Like I get requested to go and speak at conferences all the time. Beyond POC, it's brand that's building all of that, okay? And I would say to you that, you know, being a pretty big committed content person, there have been wins all the way along, but it's been the last 12 months where it's really started to kick in, okay? Um, all right, so I want to show you just how simple it is. I, because, you know, um, because a lot of people get to this point and they're like, I love it conceptually, uh, but, but I'm scared about what it all needs to look like. Um, it is a mix, all right? We're going to go with, um, we're going to go with a mix of well-produced content and raw content, all right? I think the two need to go together. Uh, so we call that our cornerstone content, all right? So we've got cornerstone, which is our well-produced uh, you know, well thought through stuff like this. And then we have the raw stuff, okay? Now, it, because, because it's okay and acceptable in 2020 and 2021 for you to produce content on a phone, okay? Literally, you do have the ability to, you know, be out on site and go, hey guys, I'm just out on site and I saw this really cool thing and I thought I'd film it and here I am, right? You can do that, but you can't do that on its own anymore, okay? So we need the cornerstone content and we wrap around it raw content. But if you just do raw without the cornerstone, I think you are, you are leaving a lot of brand on the table because, because we're moving into a time when well-produced works. So let me just do a little drawing for you because I, I want, and then I'm gonna, then I'm gonna show you something. So what do I mean by cornerstone? I mean, like, literally, you need to come up with a backdrop. Now it can't. I would not. Uh, we're beyond the standard white wall. It's just got to be something that's a little bit engaging. It could be bricks. It could be painted bricks, right? It could be a full technology space. It could be six TVs, although that's overkill for most people. It could be that you get a pallet and you nail pallets to a wall to give it that kind of like chicka chaka wood look. All right. Either way, you've got to have you've got to have some sort of backdrop that you can do your show against. All right. So let's say we're doing the pallets thing. And that's just pallets, right? Um, and then what do we need? Well, maybe, maybe there's some, just some lighting that kind of hangs down for a bit of ambience, but they're not really lighting, lighting, right? Let's say that's what we've got. So we need to build a backdrop, one thing. Then, of course, we're going to have to have a desk or something or whatever you stand up at. But I want to go through what you need to buy. You need to buy, okay? So here's you. You need to buy a couple of things. You need to buy a camera, okay? So we need the backdrop. We need a camera. We need a microphone, right? A wireless one could be like this. Could just be a lapel that plugs into the to the camera so that we can receive a good signal. You need good audio, right? So we need a mic. Um, uh, and then the fourth thing we need, the fourth thing is some paneling for some lights. All right. So just just draw a little light thing on here. All right. So we need some LED panels. All right. So the reason why I tell you all of that is because, and I have banged on about this a little bit lately, but I've got it all in one document for you, all right? And you can grab this now by going to businessgreenhouse.com.au forward slash giveaway. Um, and you've probably already done it because I have mentioned this, but now's the perfect time because this is where we go through different types of cameras, different types of lighting, different types of mics, different kind of podcasting equipment and so forth. You can grab that right now by going to that URL. If you were to make that investment and, and buy good quality gear, that whole thing is gonna cost you about a thousand bucks, okay? You can do it for cheaper, but let's say it's seven to 800 to a thousand dollars. Let's just think about what that is. 
That is the equipment that you've now got so that on demand, you can start putting out educational content. Okay, you can literally set up a corner. We, we have a studio that's permanently built. You can set up a place in the corner of your home or your office or wherever you are, leave it as a studio, and then every week walk in there and film something. Or when you have a thought, walk in there and film something. Right? That's, listen, you might be thinking this is crazy. This is the world that we live in today. And here's my super concern for you. Here is my super concern for you. There is a generation coming through right now that are so good at business that for them, producing content and building a brand is an absolute no-brainer. And if you don't do it and they do do it, it's only a matter of time before they completely take you out. So you've got to jump on that. You've got to jump on this right now. Otherwise, this next generation will just outperform you. All right? $1,000 and, and then a bit of your time and what you're doing is building a brand that's recognizable in perpetuity forever that will shore up your future revenue. It will mean that you don't have to be so sales and marketing, sales and marketing focused, okay? Yes, you need to be that now and at the start, but you won't have to do that forever if you just decide to put out content, okay? Do interviews, grab people, do some raw stuff on site, but just educate. Educate, educate, educate with valuable tips. Don't worry about what you sound like, what you look like, don't worry about your own ego. Just start doing it because that's when you'll get better and happier and, and more comfortable at it. I just showed you my embarrassing videos from when I, uh, when I did mine right back in the beginning and I literally don't care. I know it's bad, um, but it got me started. And that's my point here. Just get started. Listen, nobody remembers your amazing content. Nobody remembers your bad content. Just keep putting it out in perpetuity. Don't look back in 24 months and you will start to see an upkick of brand. You'll go places. People are like, I've been watching your stuff. I've been seeing your stuff. I really like the way you're targeting. Da, da, da. They'll start to say those things and then it will really, really mean it. All right. I'm going to give you a bit of homework as a result of this session. Your homework is this, I want you to sit down right now while this is fresh in your mind, grab a pen, grab a paper, and just quickly jot down what are the 21 topics that you could do value on. Like what are 21, like list them now, because if you've got them down, you literally only just have to go in and film them rather than think. If you were to literally right now, list down 21 topics that would be educational, that you can put content around, do it right now. All right, so in the comments section below, do me a favor. What was the top one thing that jumped out to you from this video, please? Do me a favor and put something in the comments box because I want to see what's popping with you guys, all right? I'm listening as much as I'm talking because I want to, when I read all your answers and I reply to you all, because I'm, I want to consume what's going on in your world because I want to serve you best, all right? So what was the top one thing that jumped out to you in this video? Pop it down in the comments below and I'll read it and I'll reply to you. And by the way, before you go, do me a favor, subscribe to my channel. See ya. No sleep, no rest. Might crash, might. But first I stretch. Tell them run it off.